Lord be with you. And also with you. The Lord calls us to love one another as he loved us. In silence, let us call to mind those times when we have failed to love or to be loved. You made us to be one family, yet we have divided humanity. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You were born a Jew to reconcile all people, yet we have brought disharmony amongst races. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You rejoice in our differences, yet we make them a cause of bad feeling. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God of holiness, your glory is proclaimed in every age. As we rejoice in the faith of your saints, inspire us to follow their example with boldness and joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. John saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He would dwell with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. This is the word of the Lord. Oh, yes. 
Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, our Lord. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if, if you had been there, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you lain him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep, so the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could he not could not he open the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus again greatly disturbed came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he's been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, I will not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God. So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked up upwards and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you have sent me. When he said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound in strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let me take you back to a chance meeting I had almost 2,000 years ago. It's been a while ago. I'm not quite sure where it was. One of those little towns outside Jerusalem. Let me see. Bethlehem, that was it. I was staying at an inn. I'd left my horse in the stable and I was walking inside when I met a man. I'd say he must have been about 60. He had a far away look in his eyes. He asked me if I would listen to his story. Well, I was by myself that evening and the man seemed interesting. We sat together in the inn over a meal and he told me his story. His name was Lazarus. He was born in Bethany, just up the road from here, but he doesn't go there anymore, not since his sisters both died. But I'm still living, he said. Although I shouldn't be, I've died once already. That struck me as odd. It was like this, he said. Forty years ago, 
Me and my sisters, Mary and Martha, were living in Bethany. They were really excited one day. They said they'd met the Messiah and he was coming to our house to eat. And I admit, there was something special about that man. His presence seemed to light up the whole room when he came in. And he always had a story to tell. Stories about his father and the kingdom in heaven. Mary just sat and listened to him while Martha buzzed around getting everything ready. Well, that night I was convinced I'd met the Messiah and he'd come to my house for dinner. Lazarus paused. It was Jesus, wasn't it, I prompted. And he continued, yes. And we became good friends. He'd drop in now and then. We'd have a few laughs. He was a good man, good company. We all liked him and I thought we got to know him quite well. <laughs> what did I know? I can't tell you the half of it. It was about a year or so later when I fell ill. Mary had heard about Jesus healing people and she knew he could heal me too. Martha sent for him, but he didn't come. He got the message, but he didn't come. That was harsh. Not for me, you understand. By that time I was so ill, I wasn't really with it at all. But I was sad for Mary and Martha. They pinned all their hopes on Jesus and it seemed like he'd let them down. I remember Mary sitting with me as I was dying and she was saying, he'll come, I know he will. Jesus will save you. He's the only one who can save you now. I know, I know he'll be here soon. Then nothing hurt anymore. There wasn't anything to hurt. I was free. I wasn't Lazarus anymore. There was nothing. Emptiness. Not dark, nor light, nor hot, nor cold, just nothing. It's like when you fall asleep, you don't really remember. But then I heard someone calling me calling me by my name. Lazarus, come out. It was a voice I recognised, calling out through the emptiness, gathering me all together with a great rushing wind. There was a bright light, far brighter than the sun. I remember standing and stumbling towards the light, I was all caught up in stuff. Someone pulled a cloth from my eyes and there were my friends and Mary and Martha and they were all looking amazed. And there was Jesus. He was looking a bit tired. So I looked back to see where I'd been. It was a tomb. Lazarus stopped speaking. All around us the inn had fallen silent, all listening now to this fantastic tale. No one doubted this man with the faraway look. Well, you couldn't make that sort of stuff up, could you? So what happened next? I bet you were thrilled to be home with your sisters. Not really. I was the village freak, the man back from the dead. Trust me, you don't walk away from your own tomb, ready to pick up the pieces of your old life again. The only one I felt really at home with was Jesus. He understood me. 
he'd given me this life and don't get me wrong I'm grateful more grateful than you can possibly imagine but all I wanted was to be with him forever and I want that most of all it wasn't long after when he died himself I expect you've all heard about that he was crucified and he rose from the dead so I know he totally understands me but when you're given another chance another go at life how do you live it I owe Jesus everything and I tell him that whenever I see him he knows what it's like he knows me better than I know myself and he loves me anyway yes an old sinner like me we have a laugh together once in a while well thanks for your time and Lazarus got up and shuffled off the landlord told us oh he'll be fine he sometimes goes and sleeps in the stable he says he can feel Jesus there but all that left me thinking every morning when I wake up God has given me another chance at life it's the same for all of us another chance at life how are you going to use it We say together in faith, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. We believe in God the Father who created all things. For by his will they were created and have their being. We believe in God the Son who was slain. For with his blood he purchased us for God from every tribe and language from every people and nation. We believe in God the Holy Spirit. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Amen.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for being with us as we pray in faith. Let us focus on these prayers, listening for the comfort of God's word and not to allow ourselves to become distracted. Thank you for the beautiful nature all around us, which helps to lift our hearts. For children who constantly give us times to smile and forget our worries. For our families and friends with whom we can spend happy times, despite the restrictions that are still taking place, albeit less intense. In, our, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We begin our prayers by thanking you as we live through these anxious times for the peace and love that we can feel from your presence in our life. We thank you for the many volunteers who, through their love and dedication, have made such a difference in these hard times. Many, many people over the world have donated, volunteered and cared for those in need. We pray for medical staff who have put their own lives at risk, tending to victims of the COVID virus. We pray for the dire times that employers are having to recruit, recruit people to support the country. For example, healthcare workers, farmers, drivers, and many, many more. We pray that we will respond to this need. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the many important organisations which are struggling to keep positive, for charities which are finding it such a struggle to support their own. Causes. We thank you for the youth workers who have worked so hard during this crisis to provide exciting activities online. So many groups may have folded completely had it not been for their leaders' dedication. We pray and give you thanks for these volunteers. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you that there is now a light at the end of our, tunnel, our own tunnel, but pray for places such as India, Brazil and Russia whose medical services are being stretched to the limits. Be with them, Lord Jesus, in their fear and pain. Be with those who are in hospital and for their relatives who cannot see them regularly, if at all. We thank it in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you that communities have been brought together during this crisis and that after it is over, the sense of belonging continues. We pray for the local shop workers who requires, require, require us to shop locally and for the leisure and social trade which has suffered so badly. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for families everywhere, for those parents who are worried about their children's safety and for people who have elderly relatives and are worried about their vulnerability. Be with them all, Lord Jesus, and let them feel your presence as they try to organise and adjust their family life as things turn more to normality. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our clergy and for all those who've worked both in church and from the sidelines. Through you, we give thanks for Leslie and Alan, who are striving to keep three churches open and safe. For Simon and Bob and Chris, our church wardens, and the many others from our places of worship who do such sterling jobs. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank and pray for all the clergy of the Guildford Diocese as they try to keep the places of worship that they oversee safe. We pray for the churches as they plan for their Christmas events. It is so heartening, Lord, to see things happening that we often wondered would ever happen again. We pray for the family and friends of the MP and other victims of terrorism who are killed so callously without a thought of the pain and grief that their actions will cause. Be with the, those who are grieving so terribly and place your gentle hands on their shoulders and whisper in their ears so they can feel your presence and love. Give them courage to continue with their lives in the knowledge that you are with them, giving them some peace. We pray for all the country's leaders that they may come together to rid our world of this terrible pandemic and the scientists who work ceaselessly to find ways of improving on the vaccine we receive. We pray for those people who are so nervous about receiving this vaccine that they ignore advice and put others at risk. In your mercy, Lord, 
here, aren't they? Um, in, a, in, your, uh, in your mercy here, aren't they? Send us out, Lord Jesus, to be ambassadors for you, encouraging others to follow in your path. Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. In your mercy. We finish our prayers with words from a hymn that is so appropriate in these times. May God's presence surround you with love as you trust him and walk in his way. May his presence within guard and keep you from sin. Go in peace, go in joy, go in love. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. On earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. As we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For the kingdom. The power and the glory are yours. Now and forever. Amen. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit we were all baptised into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace, 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 peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, establish, strengthen and settle you in the faith. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.